Welcome back everyone, Racer X here, and today I thought I would put a very short video together for you guys about an article that I just got done reading about Ford and its plans on EVs. And I actually put two videos out over the course of the last two days talking about how Stellantis is basically going full bore down this uh, EV rabbit hole, if you will, looking to spend $18 billion over the course of the next, you know, three to four years on plants, EV battery technology, all that kind of stuff. And now we have Ford making a pivot to do something different based on what the American consumers are buying. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys a little bit about what Ford is doing. If you guys are brand new to the channel, please do me a big gigantic favor. Hit subscribe. You can find that button right over here. Only 19% of you guys watching at home are subscribed to the channel and it costs nothing. And with that said, off we go. Guys, check it out. I am back with my buddies at Dream Giveaway in the Dream Giveaway garage. As you can see right behind me, they have a really cool uh, Shelby giveaway that I want to show you. They've got a really nice 2023 Shelby Super Snake F-150 and a Centennial Edition 2023 Supercharged Mustang. Let's take a close look. This Centennial Edition Shelby Mustang is really a unique car. You can see the logo right there on the top, 1923 to 2023. Check it out, it is all Shelby from the front. You can see all the visual cues this car has on it. As I mentioned, it is supercharged. You can see the Shelby signature right there. And as you go around to the back of the car, it's got this big dark wing on it. It really does look nice. Check out the badge on the back of this telling you Carol Shelby Centennial Edition as well. And on the inside, it is equally as nice. Look at that beautiful Whipple supercharger sitting right on top of that five liter Coyote engine, 750 horsepower in this Shelby Edition Mustang. It absolutely screams. Of course, when you jump over here to the truck, being given away in the same drawing with this Mustang, you can see all the Shelby cues on this truck here as well. Take a look from the front. Once again, this one is supercharged as well. This looks very aggressive, this Super Snake truck from the front. 800 horsepower in this Super Snake Shelby F-150. You can see the cues of Shelby all around this truck. Things get even better on the inside of this truck. You can see it's got the Shelby floor mats signed right there, which is really cool. You can see all the Shelby cues inside here as well. Once again, you get the logos on the back of the seats, upgraded interior, everything on this truck is upgraded, 800 horsepower, what an amazing machine. Both of these beautiful Shelby Centennial vehicles are available in one single drawing. Yes, if you win, you win both of these two beautiful cars. Uh, right now, if you use my code RACERX, you will get not two, but three times the entries for one price. So definitely go out to Dream Giveaway's website. You can see some of the other giveaways they have there as well. Use my code. I will pin the link down below, and I can't wait to see who wins. Now I will go ahead and put the link to the article that I'm referencing in the video description so you guys can go check all this out for yourself. But I basically wrote down all the high points right here. Now when you talk about Ford, they have been one of the American companies at least that has been kind of out in front of this entire EV wave, if you will, or what they thought was going to be an EV wave. I mean, they have spent billions and billions of dollars developing their E-Line or what they call their E-Line, which is their electrics. Uh, their plug-in hybrids, stuff like that. I mean, you can check it all right out on their website, all of the different vehicles that they have. Some are commercial. I mean, they've got their Mach-E, which we know is not doing well at all. And the American consumers, as I've mentioned in the last couple of videos, they've kind of spoken with their wallets, and EV sales are sluggish at best. And it only seems to be getting worse. Those sales are just kind of tanking. I mean, you can go on good car, bad car. You can look at EV sales. You can look by make and model. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can look this stuff up. But all of the data, it doesn't lie. And uh, Ford is actually taking notice of this. So Jim Farley and team, they are making a pivot. Obviously, they're still American-owned. They can react to what the American consumer wants. And I feel like they do a pretty good job of that. So what they're saying is they're looking to reevaluate their EV strategy. <clears throat> they're going to completely cancel a fully electric SUV that was coming into the lineup here very soon. They're just going to cancel it due to the slow demand. They're also postponing their next generation E. 
pickup truck. I have a feeling they're kind of waiting to see what happens with the new administration to see if that opens up the playbook for them. A lot like what I feel like Stellantis may be doing with some of their stall tactics on building their new, uh, it's like $3 billion plant. Uh, so that's a whole nother story there. But 30% cost cut on their annual budget on their E-line. So a third of their budget is going away and they're going to reallocate that for internal combustion and kind of go back uh, to their roots. They expect their EV division alone to lose five and a half billion dollars just this year. That is a monster chunk of money that their E-line is going to be losing this year. So yeah, they need to react and do something. And they also have a Canadian plant that initially was set aside for EV production. It's going to be retooled and they're going to be building internal combustion vehicles instead. And this may just be the first step uh, as to what Ford is going to be doing to kind of pivot and give American consumers what they want. Now, we have yet to hear anything out of GM on this. I fully expect to hear something from GM. Obviously, they have a big lineup of electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles as well. And I think initially they did okay. The same exact thing is happening with those vehicles. They're just sitting on the lots. They're more expensive than people want to pay for. And it's just not working. So fully expect General Motors to make a pivot here very soon as well. I do expect that <laughs> any day we'll probably see something from Mari Barra and team like, hey, look, guess what? We're not doing all that well with EVs and we got to make a change. Um, I don't necessarily... Uh, expect Stellantis to do the same thing, being that they're European owned now and uh, EVs are working just fine over in Europe. They're working fine in China, not doing well in the US. I really, really hope that they make a pivot, go back to their roots, more internal combustion offerings, hopefully more high horsepower stuff. But, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. I don't think it's likely under the Stellantis regime with Stellantis, as I've already talked about at length. Now, for the record, I will just come out and say, I feel like the non-plug-in hybrid cars are actually really cool, provided that they are reliable and they don't cost too much. Because you really do get the best of both worlds with those, especially if you're looking for just something to use as a daily that gets good gas mileage, that checks off all the boxes. Um, I think that's absolutely great because you don't have the hindrance of having to find a charging station, wait forever, plug the thing in. And I think that is really the main reason that a lot of people don't like the full EVs. And we have a lot of our population that live in urban areas. Uh, a lot of people live in apartments. It's just not a very good option for those people. And you just have to make a lot of concessions when it comes to EVs. I've even seen studies where a lot of people that buy EVs, like half of them, just want to go back to internal combustion because of all the hassle. I mean, it is out there. That is what's happening right now. I think about a car like the E-Ray. Um, obviously, in my mind, you get the best of both worlds. You have two electric motors driving the front uh, tires, and then in the back, you still get that fire-breathing V8, making that thing unbelievably fast on the street and a ton of fun to drive. Like I said, the best of both worlds. But if you go to a plug-in hybrid where you have to start plugging the thing in, that is when people start to go, you know what? It's really not worth it. At least a lot of people really do feel that way. And so I'm really glad that Ford um, is being a little bit aggressive, trying to react and, and get out there in front of all this so they can maintain profitability. And like I said, I really hope the other ones, uh, they kind of follow right along that same path. Let me know what you guys think. I said, I just want to put this out there. If I hear more from any of these companies about them making a pivot, I will certainly let you know. But I am glad to see that Ford is at least going back towards their roots with to some degree, right? I mean, they've got to sustain that profitability. Five and a half billion dollars is a lot of money to lose in a single year on your EV stuff. I expect those numbers to be even worse for GM. Who knows where Stellantis is headed with those brands. So we'll just wait and see. But anyway, guys, I'd love to hear it in the comments down below. And I'll catch you on the next one. So until then, race Rex.